Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video we are continuing on with the Christian book series that I started on here. The book that we are studying together is called What on Earth Am I Here For? It's by Dr. Rick Warren. Yes, yeah, so this week's video is chapter two of the book, week two. Chapter one of this book was really incredible and it just talked about the fact that it's not about us at all, it's just about God and what he has planned for us in being here on this earth. So yeah, week one was really incredible. If you haven't watched that video, I will link it down in the description and you can go check it out and then you'll be all caught up if you watch this one as well so if you're new to my channel then make sure to subscribe so you can see more videos like this give it a big thumbs up if you're keen to see the next episode and comment down below what you enjoyed most about week two yeah i'm super excited to get into this week's video week two baby let's do it so the title of week two is called You Are Not An Accident. It's given us a verse here and it says, I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. Okay, so you were not an accident. Your birth was no mistake or mishap and your life is no fluke of nature. Your parents may not have planned you, but God did. He was not at all surprised by your birth. In fact, he expected it. Long before you were conceived by your parents, you were conceived in the mind of God. He thought of you first. It is not fate, nor chance, nor luck, nor coincidence that you are breathing at this very moment. You are alive because God wanted to create you. The Bible says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. God prescribed every single detail of your body. He deliberately chose your race, the color of your skin, your hair, and every other feature. He custom made your body just the way he wanted it. He also determined the natural talents you would possess and the uniqueness of your personality. The Bible says, You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body, you know exactly how I was made, bit by bit how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Because God made you for a reason, he also decided when you would be born and how long you would live. He planned the days of your life in advance, choosing the exact time of your birth and death. The Bible says, you saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. God also planned where you'd be born and where you'd live for his purpose. Your race and nationality are no accident. God left no detail to chance. He planned it all for his purpose. The Bible says, From one man he made every nation, and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. Nothing in your life is arbitrary. It's all for a purpose. Most amazing, God decided how you would be born. Regardless of the circumstances of your birth or who your parents are, God had a plan in creating you. It doesn't matter whether your parents were good, bad, or indifferent. God knew that those two individuals possessed exactly the right genetic makeup to create the custom you he had in mind. They had the DNA God wanted to make you. While there are illegitimate parents, there are no illegitimate children. Many children are unplanned by their parents, but they are not unplanned by God. God's purpose took into account human error and even sin. God never does anything accidentally. He never makes mistakes. He has a reason for everything he creates. Every plant and every animal was planned by God, and every person was designed with a purpose in mind. God's motive for creating you was his love. The Bible says, Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us at the focus of his love. God was thinking of you even before he made the world. In fact, that's why he created it. God designed this planet's environment just so we could live in it. We are the focus of his love and the most valuable of all his creation. The Bible says, God decided to give us life through the word of truth so we might be the most important of all the things he made. This is how much God loves and values you. God is not haphazard. He planned it all with great precision. The more psychics, biologists, and other scientists learn about the universe, the better we understand how it is uniquely suited for our existence, custom made with the exact space specifications that make human life possible. Dr. Michael Denton, Senior Research Fellow in Human Molecular Genetics at the University of Otago in New Zealand, has concluded, All the evidence available in the biological sciences supports the core proposition that the cosmos is a specially designed whole with life and mankind as its fundamental goal and purpose, a whole in which all facets of reality have their meaning and explanation in this central fact. The Bible said the same thing thousands of years earlier. God formed the earth. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. Why did God do all this? Why did he bother to go to all the trouble of creating a universe for us? Because he is a God of love. This kind of love is difficult to fathom, but it's fundamentally reliable. You were created as a special object of God's love. God made you so he could love you. This is a truth to build your life on. The Bible tells us God is love. It doesn't say God has love. He is love. Love is the essence of God's character. 
character. There is perfect love in the fellowship of the Trinity. So God didn't need to create you. He wasn't lonely, but he wanted to make you in order to express his love. God says, I have carried you since you were born. I have taken care of you from your birth. Even when you are old, I will be the same. Even when your hair has turned grey, I will take care of you. I made you and will take care of you. If there was no God, we would all be accidents, the result of astronomical random chance in the universe. You could stop reading this book because life would have no purpose or meaning or significance. There would be no right or wrong and no hope beyond your brief years here on earth. But there is a God who made you for a reason and your life has profound meaning. We discover that meaning and purpose only when we make God the reference point of our lives. The message paraphrase of Romans 12 verse 3 says, says, the only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us. This poem by Russell Kalfer sums it up. You are who you are for a reason. You're part of an intricate plan. You're a precious and perfect unique design called God's special woman or man. You look like you look for a reason. Our God made no mistake. He knit you together within the womb. You're just what he wanted to make. The parents you had were the ones he chose and no matter how you may feel, they were custom designed with God's plan in mind, and they bear the master's seal. No, that trauma you faced was not easy, and God wept that it hurt you so, but it was allowed to shape your heart, so that into it his likeness you'd grow. You are who you are for a reason, you've been formed by the master's rod. You are who you are, beloved, because there is a God. Alright, so that is actually the end of the message for week two. Um, it wasn't as long as week one, I think week one was kind of a big one to kind of discuss and pull apart because it really talked about the fundamentals of our faith and our purpose and it really just headed off with a bang. Okay so again like I did in the last video I'm going to go and write down some notes, um, some things that I picked up from here and just um, yeah really look back into it and write those down and then I will come back and discuss them with you guys. Alright so I am back, I have written down again two pages worth of notes. I have gone on to the other page too which is crazy but yeah I don't know I picked some really cool stuff up from um, week two so I'm really excited to share them with you guys. So what really stood out to me in week two chapter two of this book was the point that you're not an accident no matter how you came into this world no matter how you were formed no matter what you've been through God is with you and he does have a purpose over your life and nothing that has happened in your life or happened to you or how you were brought into this world was an accident it was planned with a purpose by God and yeah I hope you really do know that today um, if you're watching this and you're feeling a little bit down then I hope by the end of this video you really do know that you're not an accident and that you are really here for a purpose and so many people love you and God loves you with the main point in chapter 2 being you are not an accident I did think of a Bible verse and so I went and searched it up and I wrote it down and it's from Psalm 139 verse 13 to 16 and it says you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvellous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So again, that's from Psalm 139 verse 13 to 16. I love this verse so much because it's so deep and meaningful and it really just shows how much work and how much knowledge God has of us and how much work he put into creating us and how precious we are in his eyes and it's a real key reminder that we do need to speak words of affirmation over ourselves that we are loved by someone and that we are precious and I think in this day and age and in this generation we so often speak so many negative words over ourselves and it is really hard because we are constantly faced with what we should look like and what we should be doing and what expectations we should be hitting in the world's eyes but we do need to remember that we are so precious in God's eyes so yeah I think it's really cool that um, week two just focused on um, knowing our self-worth through God and um, our self-worth through the plans that he has for our lives and the purpose that he has for us the second point that I picked up was we are here because God willed and chose for us to be here not because of fate we are here because God willed for us to be here and he has a reason and a purpose that we're here on earth and um, that purpose is to glorify him we all serve such a unique purpose here on earth and um, we all have different personalities and different talents and we can use all of that to glorify God I think it's really cool that each of us are here for a purpose and that is God's purpose but we're all here for different purposes in life so another point that I wrote down was 
He made us just the way we are or unique. So again, this chapter is just saying God has made all of us very different. We don't have to fit into society standards at all. We're all here to be unique and to offer different things in the world to glorify God. We're all here with different talents and different purposes. So please, if you're watching this, do embrace your uniqueness. I know it's hard sometimes when we're bombarded by the expectations of the world, but please do embrace your uniqueness. I love that this chapter of the book is just reminding us of all the specific things that God had planned in our lives. So what I wrote down was God planned all aspects of our lives according to his purpose, including when we were born and where, when we will die, where we will live, and what family we would be a part of. And whether that is a physical blood family, whether that is a church family, whether it is your friendship group that's your family at God, um, took into consideration when he was planning us to be in this world. Everything is so specific to us and we were all personalized in our own way which is so cool. He didn't just make robots, he didn't just make identical duplicates. We we're all at different paces and all doing life in a very different way and so I think it's really cool that God has blessed us with that uniqueness and that we can kind of come together and discuss it and yeah just kind of embrace the uniqueness that God has given us. Another point that I wrote down was nothing was left to chance, it is all for a purpose and I think that's so cool. A lot of people believe in life that everything is just chance, that um, you know if you land that job that it's just chance, it's just luck. Nothing that happens in our life is planned for our purpose, it's planned for God's purpose. Again going back to week one, it's not about us, it's about God. Another point that I wrote down was God chose our parents, whether good or bad, because they had what God needed to bring us into the world. He needed those people to bring you into the world and whether you have a relationship with your parents or you don't, you are here for a purpose and it is bigger than just your parents. Another point that I wrote down was, no matter what others or parents may have negatively spoken over your life, God did not make a mistake with you. And this is what you really need to get from this week is that no matter what people have spoken over your life, no matter what your parents have said about you or made you feel you are here for a purpose and God did not make a mistake with you. There's a reason you're here, there's a reason you're in the 21st century, there's a reason why you're in your country, in your community, in your family. Something that I really liked that I picked up from the book was, like you and I, every part of creation was created for a reason and we all serve as plan in a different way. I mean God could have created us all the same and all to do the same thing and it wouldn't have really worked out well that way, but instead he created us to serve in very different ways. A verse that I thought of when reading this was Ephesians 1 verse 4, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So this verse is basically saying God chose us, he chose us without fault in his eyes. There is nothing wrong with us, we are perfect in his eyes. Although society and the world can tell us all these things that are wrong with us and that we need to change, we just need to stand firm in the truth that we are perfect in God's eyes. I love how this verse is also saying that even before anything else was created, God loved us and he chose us to be holy in him. He chose us as his people to journey life with him and for him. Another thing that I thought of when going through this book was that he designed everything so that we could live. We are the center of his creation and what he's done here on earth and so I think it's really incredible that he designed every specific thing around us so that we could live. He chose all those crazy scientific things to happen and to be the numbers that they are so that we could live and survive on earth and thrive for him. Another note that I wrote down was, the more we dig, the more we see how God made everything specific to the human existence. I love how the book just says to us, the more scientists and biologists are digging, the more they are seeing that there has to be something more than just the Darwin theory, there has to be something more than just chance for us to be able to survive here on this earth. But everything is so perfect and so planned out and so precise for the human existence that there has to be something more than just chance. So the main point of this chapter is really just saying God is a God of love. He doesn't have it, he doesn't possess it, he is love. The Bible says it itself, it says God is love. The reason why we're here is because of his love for us. He doesn't need us, he's God, he has angels, but he created us because he wanted to express his love in a way of creating people to follow him and serve him. I love that this chapter reinforced the idea that um, we are here because of God's love and that we are an expression of God's love and I think that is so cool. We can just really live in that truth every day that um, we are here for a reason and we're unique and 
God wants us here and that we are an expression of God's love. So as you know, there is always kind of a little questionnaire slash point to ponders at the end of each chapter. It's a point to ponder, a verse to remember, a question to consider and a message to hear. Now that I've discussed everything that was kind of in this chapter and my thoughts and kind of what I got from it, um, I thought it would be good to go through the thinking about my purpose. So let's go through that now and I'll just kind of share with you what I think. So the point to ponder for this week is I am not an accident. I think it's so important to remember that we are unique and that we are here for a reason. We're not here by chance. We are here because the God of the heavens and the earth created us. And no matter what people are telling you or speaking over your lives or whatever expectations people are putting on you, you are here for a reason and you are not here by chance. So the verse to remember for week two is, I am your creator, you were in my care even before you were born. And that's from Isaiah 44 verse two. Now for the big question to consider, I know that God uniquely created me. What areas of my personality, background and physical appearance am I struggling to accept? So obviously it's clear just from our discussion that this week's message is about accepting ourselves and accepting the uniqueness and the purpose that God has put on us in being here on earth. And so what I'll do is I'll just go away for a little bit and write down some things that I'm thinking about that I struggle to accept and kind of in my everyday life and then I will come back and read them to you guys. So sometimes what I struggle to accept is my outgoing personality. Um, I love making people laugh. It is something that um, brings me so much joy. But sometimes in a group setting when people aren't really catching my um, excitement or my enthusiasm, I can just kind of feel like I'm a bit too much for people. So sometimes I do struggle with um, accepting that God has created my personality to be bubbly and outgoing. Sometimes people don't really give me the um, right vibe when I say things or when I say something really outgoing. So yeah, sometimes I do struggle to accept that. Another is I struggle with my filter and my randomness. And sometimes I will just blurt random stuff out or I'll just say something that I probably shouldn't have said in that moment. And it's all just because my brain moves so fast. But in group situations, it, I struggle with it a lot and it is something I constantly try and work on. Sometimes I struggle with the fact that I don't settle with what others want me to. Sometimes it's just easier to just go with what other people want you to do or what other people want you to think or say. But 99.9% .9 of the time I will stand up for what I believe and I will just tell people how it is and sometimes that ruins friendships. Sometimes other people they think I'm just not nice or kind but it's just me standing up for what I believe. So many people are praised so often for being compliant all the time and saying yes to everything that people want them to do and that's just not me. I I just can't do that and so sometimes I struggle with that because I do get some consequences for doing that and for standing up for myself and I do love it like a lot of the time I'm fine with it but sometimes I face certain situations where I'm just like oh this would be easier just being somebody who would just say yes all the time and so yeah it is something I struggle with sometimes not all the time. I know the question included an area about backgrounds and for me I struggle sometimes with the fact that I've never really had a complete family relationship. I sometimes struggle with looking at my friends and seeing how perfect their family relationships are together and then looking at mine and knowing that mine's never really been complete. You no, know, why can't my family be connected and really loved up like that family is? Or Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my family. I love all my family members, but yeah, sometimes I do look at other people and other friends and just think, oh, I wish my family kind of relationship unit was like that. I think for me, it's just accepting that um, what I've been through with my family and everything like that has shaped me into the person that I am now and has given me the faith in God that I do have now. The lucky last one is what I'm sure we've all dealt with and we've all journeyed with before and that is not looking the way somebody else looks on the internet or how your friend looks and I think for me that is kind of just a daily struggle that you go through with accepting yourself and your body and what you look like and who you are as a person. And chapter two was really refreshing to read to just be told that you know what, you are perfect in someone's eyes, you are worthy and you are wonderfully and fearfully made and I think it's really 
awesome and refreshing to be told that instead of you need to look this way. Some days I love myself and some days I'm just feeling really down and wanting to look like somebody else and wanting to change certain things and I think it is definitely an ongoing journey for me, um, especially being 17. I think this age is a real self journey and even going through life it's always going to be like this but I think just journeying it with God and pressing into him and his word and what he has to say about us. Journeying the situation with God and leaning into him and what his word has to say about me helps me to um, know the truth that God loves me and that I am uniquely made through him and by him and so yeah I would encourage you to do the same if you're ever feeling down. Yeah so those are the things that I kind of struggle to accept um, about myself but I know it is a constant journey and I'm journeying it with God and I know that I'm becoming more confident in him and who he's made me to be so to be honest it's true when I say that the world is getting worse and worse with the expectations that they have over us and I think, yeah, it's just good to lean into God and to what he has to say about us. So that is it for this video. Let me know down below what your answer to this question was. If you'd like to share, you're more than welcome to. If you want to take this question away and share it with a mentor or a friend or a family member, then you can do that too. But what is it that you struggle with accepting about yourself? Remember that you are unique and that you are wonderfully and fearfully made and that God loves you so incredibly much and that you are not here by chance. You are here because God willed and planned for you to be here. All right, my beautiful people. So that is it from me. I will see you in the next video, which will be week three of what on earth am I here for? And I'm super excited about it. I hope you are too. Make sure to smash that like button to let me know that you're excited for the rest of the series. Comment down below your answer and make sure to subscribe so you can see the next video as soon as it comes out. I love you very much and I hope you have a wonderful evening or morning wherever you are in the world. 